you need to be really considering marriage. It's really not that different. Academically, looking at the research, there is a difference and they're very real. So soda is the Mormon version of coffee. No. We're always told that our body is a temple and that they don't really care, as far as I know, about like plastic surgery. They're not coming out with a long scroll of like, no, you shouldn't ingest bleach. You know, it was... <laughs>Hey guys, <laughs> that was so somber. <laughs> you guys are in for a weird one today. Mm. Um, so, I pro we, we've all heard a lot about the secret lives of Mormon wives on Hulu, which Hulu? is a bit of an oxymoron. Like what you literally just said, we've heard a lot about yeah. the secret lives. But sorry, keep not to interrupt. Hulu has been on a weird thing about Latter Day Saints <laughs> lately. Like they did the show with Andrew Garfield. That's right. This one. I think, I think they did. The, I feel like there was another one out there. The like keep sweet, pray and obey one or whatever. Was oh, that a Hulu that's one? Right, was I that, think so. Was, that... was it? It might. That really? might have been Netflix. Oh, never mind. Okay, maybe it's just streaming. That services. was on my mission, but Mormon no more. Yeah, Wait, that was, was it, another Hulu. Was there another one called like? Was it like called Big Love or something? That one's been I... around for a while. Oh really? Okay. But yeah, like streaming services have this strange fascination with Latter Day Saints right now. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so as it happens. Wilson and I have not seen Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Um, I don't necessarily think we're the target audience <laughs> for really? this show. Really? I'm shocked. <laughs> and I think we were probably both like happy with, I was, with having not seen it. I, I, ignorance was absolutely bliss. bliss. <laughs> uh, yet here we are, and we've been asked to blind react to some clips from the show. So that's what we're going to do. Um, for better or for worse. Let's roll the first clip. Being pregnant and recommitting and trying to go back to church is not the typical Mormon thing to do and most wouldn't. And I feel like they'd be a little bit more shameful. And I do have those feelings, anxiety, fear of going back in and being judged. However, I still love our faith and really want to make an effort to go. So we are just going to try. I think that when you're pregnant and you're bringing a life into the world, you need to be really considering marriage. It's really not that different, you know? The first thing I'll do is I will acknowledge her vulnerability there, and I yes. appreciate that she wants to go back. For sure. Um, there, are, there are all kinds of Latter-day Saints in the church. There are some people in some wards who are going to judge her. Um, in my experience, I think people are happy when, you know, people have... Because in the church, we believe, you know, you shouldn't have sex outside of marriage. Mm -hmm. Clearly. She's pregnant outside of marriage. And so I understand her fear of being judged. But sure. in my experience, um, in my ward, for example, I think she would, you know, be welcomed and people would be glad to see her there uh, because it shows that she's putting forth effort. Absolutely. To, you know, maintain that relationship with with Christ. And so I, 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 I disagree. I understand her fear of being judged. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in any church, you're going to find people who do that. But uh, I would hope that people wouldn't, and I applaud her for wanting to, you know, make things work even in her different life circumstances. For sure. Like, at the end of the day, I would just be happy that she was there because, yeah. like, just making those steps towards repentance or towards wanting to establish that relationship with Christ is all that you can ever ask from somebody. Yeah. Like, we aren't perfect, and we all, we all do make mistakes. But, I mean, that path back to the covenant path is just one that you take it one step at a time, right? And yeah. so she obviously is making those steps. So she mentioned there at the end, it sounded like she was saying that there's really not that much of a difference between being married and not mm -hmm. being married. I did an interview with a Yale professor on Keystone. OK, um, it was actually about evolution, but he talks about the importance of marriage, too. Mm -hmm. And all he does is he talks about um, about academic studies that have looked at, you know, the I don't remember if it was, you know, quality of life or, you know, level of happiness or yeah. whatever. Um, between people who are married, who have, you know, signed that document, made that commitment versus people who are just living together. Um, and there's a difference. Mm -hmm. There's there's not even talking religiously, just like really? academically looking at the research, looking at the data, there is a difference and there are very real just practical benefits from marriage versus cohabitation. So something, you know, something for her to consider. <laughs> For sure. And I do feel like 
like I'm glad that she's making those steps to try and and repent and to like get back in the covenant path and like she's going to church. But also I feel like truthfully, I feel like that would probably be something to consider would be marriage in that situation. Like obviously yeah. like, I'm not in that situation, but like I feel like as a part of showing that I don't know, you want to repent from that, you want to make a change, I feel like that would be something at least worth considering. But it seems like she seemed pretty adverse yeah. or pretty against that notion. But And to each their own, I guess. Very you true. Know, very she gets true. To, she has to exercise her agency and make that call. I don't know how it turns out for her in this season or if there are any adverse consequences because of that. But anyway, interesting clip. Without knowing any context, it's, or it, it's a great little <laughs> little taste, little sampler of uh, that wasn't so bad. Secret lives, no. yeah, that wasn't as you know dramatic as I thought it would be. But let's let's continue. Okay, see what else we find. Press on. In the Mormon Church, drinking alcohol is not allowed. But even though Mormons don't drink, we like to party. So soda is the Mormon version of coffee because we're not supposed to have coffee or tea. So then Mormons have tons of soda. Amazing. So shops open like the same time as a coffee shop. You see people in the drive-thru getting soda at like eight in the morning, which is crazy. That's like, I mean, she's not wrong. Like that's a pretty, <laughs> I feel like, okay, I'm not from Utah. And I feel like yeah. this is definitely a large part of Utah culture as opposed yes. to mormon lds culture yeah but i would say like i have i was pretty i thought it was interesting moving to utah and witnessing that yeah and i feel like she's not that wasn't inaccurate yeah i do think it's very utah centric take mm -hmm. uh, on this topic most latter-day saints do not live in utah they're elsewhere in the world where i don't think that this is true no um <laughs> so yeah if you equate the church with utah yeah i could see that um we do like our we do like soda here. I like soda. I don't know that it's, I don't know that I like soda because I can't have Cause Yeah, like that's, that's your replacement. I don't know. I would like to think that even if I wasn't a member of the church, I wouldn't be interested in at least alcohol. Yeah. I think that's a growing uh, trend. I read something in the it, news it, about it, it being a growing is, yeah. trend among the younger generation anyway, mm -hmm. being less interested in alcohol. But yeah, if there's like a social event, there will probably be soda there. I've been a big root beer fan my whole life. Well, for sure. Well, there's a reason why companies like Swig and Fizz and So Delicious and Twisted Sugar and like all of these like soda shops yeah. all started and originated in Utah and then expanded from there. Did they all? like, oh, I'd like definitely. Somebody <laughs> fact check Wilson on this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're probably right. Well, like, I'm, I'm almost I'm almost certain because like they those were I mean, they've been in Utah forever. But they've just recently started building, like, we got, like, a swig in Texas, like, mm. I don't know, like, a year ago for the first time. And, like, we got a So Delicious, like, a, a couple years before that. But, like, it is really not, has been a huge thing outside of Utah. Like, mm. the whole dirty sodas and, like, all that stuff. It's, like, a total, total Utah culture thing. But... I think we can own that. And, yeah, like... I'm not ashamed of that. And you can definitely, you could chalk up, like... Yes, like there's a lot of LDS people who live in Utah, right? Yeah. And so there's probably not going to be as many coffee shops, probably not as many liquor stores. Yeah. And there's probably going to be more soda shops. Like, I, that's a fair, fair correlation. And I will say, when it comes to the word of wisdom, that we tend to emphasize different things have been emphasized differently over time when it comes fair. to the word of yes. wisdom. We did a faith and beliefs episode on that that you can find on this channel. But I do think that we tend to focus more on like the four or five things that, we have prohibited mm -hmm. and from that assume that anything else is fine right this is very fair so i think we're like okay no coffee but i am gonna drink a 60 ounce thing of soda <laughs> my 44 ounce day. texas tab yeah 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 so i do think that that is something that we should focus mm -hmm. on changing in our faith or at least in the utah segment of our faith um well i feel like that's i feel like it's pretty you know like pretty global as far as like the church like i feel like that emphasis mm. is pretty yeah standard the emphasis on things that you shouldn't have mm -hmm. yeah i think it would behoove us to focus more on the things that are healthy that we should mm -hmm. be you know taking into our body but great interesting point. great interesting point. um hmm. coming 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 from like the stuff i do on keystone where i'm like talking about like history and stuff to going to like 
these girls like talking about like soda and stuff. Whiplash. It's, it is a little whiplash. It's like, wow, this is a totally different side of things than I'm used to. But all right. Like I would low-key never get laughing gas for Botox, but I'll do it today just for fun. I'm like, like just, I've never had laughing. Get high like, for why not? Like, like, like am I not gonna get high for free? Like what it's you not against even? the rules. In the LDS religion, we do not smoke, do not drink, but when this mom talk group gets Botox, they'll get laughing gas and it's a party. <laughs> Sorry, but I feel like I'm gonna fall asleep. Oh my god. <laughs> You guys, it's already hitting me. I'm not even kidding. So do you think that everyone comes for the Botox or the laughing gas? Oh, they come for both because they know they're going to get that gas and it's no extra charge. <laughs> Wait, don't you feel good? <laughs> I need a second. <laughs> My arms are like, I'm not even <laughs> Everything just feels like weird. Yeah. Have you never been high before? No. Oh, okay. In the LDS church, some of the reasons why we had these guidelines, like the word of wisdom, is basically because we want to make sure that we're taking care of our bodies and we're always told that our body is a temple and we want to keep it clean and put clean things in it. It's actually surprising that they don't really care, as far as I know, about like plastic surgery. So everyone be getting Botox and lip filler here. What was she rubbing on her face? <laughs> it's like she stuck her hand in a like a vat of like butter and was just like, Ugh. <laughs> I'm clearly very unfamiliar with the process of getting Botox. To be fair, I am too. So I I, I can't speak to that. <laughs> Have you ever been on laughing gas, had laughing gas for anything? I have been on laughing gas one time when I got a tooth pulled when I was yeah. probably like 12 uh -huh. or 13. And from what I remember, it was just like, like, yeah, like I laughed. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I like I did. Like, I, I just laughed for a little bit and like everything was kind of chill and they just like yanked the tooth and then. I was a little loopy for another like 20 minutes and then I was back yeah. to normal. I've been on laughing gas a couple times for the same thing, just at yeah. the dentist. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it's it was like something, something about it. Yeah. <laughs> it is like like I was like, I was like, life is good. Like I was just laughing. It was great. Yeah. Uh I don't I mean, I think it's kind of weird to just like get Botox so you can be on the gas. Feels like they're like trying to find like a loophole in things, but I don't think it's <laughs> I don't think it's that big um, a deal. Pretty sure yeah. it's not common among Latter-day Saint wives to be like, um, this is getting Botox <laughs> just to get like the laughing gas, but to each their <laughs> It's just like, I mean, to me, it feels like we got a spirit of the law and a letter of the law, right? And so yeah. it's like, like we have these commandments, not just to like, like push and push and push and see how close we can get yeah. to not breaking the commandment. And like, like that, that's not the point of having them, right? Yeah. Like the point of having commandments is like, it gives us this opportunity to follow God and to show like our love for, and devotion to him. And that doesn't necessarily like, yes, are they actually breaking the commandment? Like, no, like this is, this is laughing gas. Like they give yeah. it to children. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know enough about laughing gas to be able to like say mm -hmm. if it's like. Is it harmful? Is it addictive? Like, I think a big reason why we avoid like drugs is because of their addictive nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't know if, you know, laughing gas fits in that category or not, but I'm not too worried <laughs> about it. It's just kind of a weird thing to do. Yeah, it's, it's honest. That was just, just strange. Like, I, it's just weird. <laughs> I'll be honest. I got to tell you, I got to tell you. So um, my wife and I took our kids in to get flu shots okay. the other day at the pediatrician's office and the one we go to is on the second floor but on the first floor there's a botox office and so we were pre preparing our son like okay you're gonna get a shot today it might hurt for a second but you'll be okay you know uh -huh. and we walk into the building and there's this massive like window decal of a close up on this woman's lips with a needle, a syringe right next to her lips. And it's just like, and so my son is seeing this like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are they going to do? Uh, this doesn't look like a good idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and uh, it was just not what you wanted to see, right? As you're <laughs> walking to... in to get a flu shot. From oh the my pediatrician. gosh. Yeah, I don't. Uh, this is we are not the audience for the I, Botox absolutely not. Thing. If I'm being honest, like I've never 
understood like, it understood it like plastic surgery is just not something that like i know much about nor do i really know where the church stands on it if i'm being honest i think it's one of those things where they just say where they just teach teach correct principles mm -hmm. and let people govern themselves mm -hmm. like they're not saying like no this is prohibited yeah that they they do currently do that with some word of wisdom things substances mm -hmm. alcohol True. et cetera. uh but like they're not coming out with a long scroll of like no, you shouldn't ingest bleach. You know, it was, <laughs> yeah. like they're not going to say they're not going to command in all things as Very the true. scripture goes. So I think when it comes to plastic surgery, they're just like, make your own decision. Yeah. Take care of your body, you know, for sure. So. Which so I they're making it, their own decisions here, which I think is different than as you say to like saying they don't care. Like, yeah, like I feel like obviously like, it is taught like we want to take care of our bodies. They're gifts from God. Yeah. So like, but they care about your agency too. Yes, yes. That, that's that's and a we've seen, much better way to put it. We've seen shifts towards more of that lately, True. like with the True. Strength for Youth pamphlet. Mm -hmm. The one that I grew up with pretty clearly outlined, like, don't do these things. Mm. No piercings, no tattoos. Yeah, or like one set of this. piercings. Or yeah, yeah, sorry. But now it's, here's a principle, make your own choice, mm -hmm. which I think is fantastic. There are going to be people who probably make the wrong choice mm -hmm. you know in their circumstances probably but but i respect that they are um giving people more room to make their make their own choices yeah it's, it it's a things. higher law it's a higher law situation yeah i don't know if botox and laughing gas is necessarily like <laughs> what uh what the uh. higher law is hoping for but i'm glad that uh. they enjoyed the camaraderie and <laughs> um giggles i guess <laughs> <laughs> the camaraderie that laughing gas creates. That's, yes. Yeah. Can you but... imagine like if I called you up and was just like, Wilson, <laughs> let's go get some shots in our face. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, hey, say the word. Say, say the, the word. word I'm there, there. I will be your part Botox two buddy. episode coming soon. <laughs> vlog Botox vlog. Oh gosh. Uh, okay, let's watch. The okay, next, next one. Our religion is about peace and love and being welcoming to everybody. So I'm like that's a little hypocritical like of the the members to be like oh you're doing that you shouldn't come it's like no that's what it's there for us to go like the sinners it's not for the saints a little bit of context yes um that we were told just before watching this clip so apparently there's a baby blessing happening and half of the mom talk group is apparently they're members but they're not active mhm mm so uh, they must be great examples to put forth to the world about what the lives of mormon wives are like anyway um so there's some angst about um whether or not they should have been invited to this baby blessing mm -hmm. what do you think um hmm. honestly i feel like the girl who was speaking there i think i think she had a point i agree because i feel like a quote i love from elder holland is that church is not this perfect place for perfect people but it's it's a hospital mm -hmm. it's a hospital for the sinners to to grow and, and to heal ultimately. And like, and I feel like we receive a lot of that healing at church through the sacrament, through these ordinances. So in that sense, I don't, I think she had a point that it's true. Like you don't need to be perfect to come to church. In fact, you, as long as you have that desire to improve and become better, then absolutely you should come to church and you should be there. And no one should ever keep you from worshiping the savior. No, no one should ever stand in the way of that. And How, however, if yeah, I can just throw out, please, I don't know if that's why they wanted to go, if that was their desire, or if that's why, like, I don't know. I don't know. Does that make sense? Because I think that they're offended that they're unable to go and they're wanting to go as because they wanted to be a part of this social event, mm. not because they were looking to establish and maintain their relationship with the Savior. Mm, yeah. So the right point but I don't know if it's coming from the right messenger. Yeah. Assuming that that was their motivation. True, true. Which we don't know. Maybe haven't, they haven't explain seen the it show. elsewhere. Very I haven't true. seen the show. Um, yeah, I, I think that it's totally fine to have less active people and non-members at your baby blessing. Absolutely. I have, I see no problem with that. I'm pretty sure I'm just, I haven't been able to prepare anything for this clip, so I don't have it right in front of me, but I'm pretty sure even in the handbook it says, so, so the father gives the baby the blessing as mm -hmm. it stands right now. And I'm pretty sure it even allows for the baby blessing to be given, uh, even if the father is not 
temple worthy mm-hmm. or priesthood worthy because it's an important you know event for the, for, sure. for the father for and sure. the baby um and and also the whole family so then to say you know that we don't want these people there because they're not active seems not even in line with the church's handbook mm-hmm. um on how it goes but it's their baby blessing i guess they get to call you know the shots on that this is fair it sounds like this was probably a baby blessing that was done at home do we know if that's true yes it was done oh, really? at home oh okay um, i have not heard of that. so during covid a lot of Babies were blessed okay, at home. Okay. And you can get permission to have your baby blessing at home, but generally, okay. according to the Doctrine and Covenants, mm-hmm. you're supposed to take the baby in yes. front of the elders of the church and bless okay. them there. So it's that normally sense. done in sacrament meeting. That makes sense. So I'm pretty sure it's the bishop's call on who, you know, because I think I think the bishop holds the keys over that ordinance in the ward. Generally, he s- tells the father to do it. Um I don't know that he would have said, "Hey, don't invite these people." Yeah. So it's it's kind this of seems a little bit more like played up for drama than for actual like, I don't know, like they are looking to like they are being like gate kept from the church kind of thing. Yeah. There's there's a little bit of I don't know, not tension, but you have to strike a balance. For example, like with baptism, like the mm-hmm. bishop is in charge of baptisms in the ward that mm-hmm. aren't that are not like not convert baptisms because the missionaries and the mission president are over that, but. Like, uh, if a kid turns eight and wants to get baptized, the bishop is in, he presides over that. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it's also a family event and the family wants to kind of have a say in what that baptismal service looks like. Yeah. But the bishop is technically in charge. So I don't know how meeting in the middle there works sometimes. Usually it's not a problem, but when it's like a Hulu <laughs> event show, of course, I don't know you know what that conversation looked like in this case Mm -hmm. um but yeah i would have disagreed with that decision to not allow certain people because they're not active if anything they should have been invited would that not be a great opportunity to fellowship them and give them an opportunity to invite the spirit back into their lives perhaps like unless they were going to bring laughing gas along (laughs) and just like spray it everywhere (laughs) i don't even think that's how laughing gas works but like I guess, I guess, you know, if they think it's going to be this That's, big it party. Been d- disruptive. Yeah. That is fair. If that was the the line of reasoning, then I would understand that more. But <laughs> I, I don't know. When something about the church comes out, um, I think a lot of members like get immediately defensive and are like, time to, you know, get our suit up and, you know, very take true. this on. Very true. I think that with this show, like, I'm really not very worried about it. Because I think everybody understands whether they're members or not. I would really hope so. I hope they would make that pretty that, clear. Yeah, that this is just, you know, mm-hmm. reality TV, not necessarily an accurate representation of what, generally speaking, Latter-day Saint wives are like. I'm sure there are, like, they they are living proof that there are some people who identify as Latter-day Saints that live like this. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure there are more. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily uh, true for the whole. Yes. Yes. I, I really couldn't agree more, especially because it feels like even in those few clips we saw, they'd be like, this is something that Latter-day Saints, that Latter-day Saints believe. Yeah. But like, we don't really want to do that or something along those lines. It seems like that kind of pops up yeah. a few times. So this is fair. It definitely was not, just not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, it's it's different, but it's not like as far as like being critical or unfair towards the church yeah i don't think it's that's not the purpose we've seen worse we have we (laughs) have seen seen a lot worse worse. we have seen worse so here's the thing this is reality tv Mm -hmm. you never know how much is just produced very true right very true like confession here my wife and i watched the bachelor (laughs) uh then you hear afterwards about how much was just not real like how much was just the producer saying, okay, go do this or ask mm-hmm. this question, et cetera. And it's just like so much of it is just just not real. It, on it's reality it's TV. TV. It's a show. It's yeah. meant to entertain. At the same time, these are real women. Um, it sounds like a lot of them are growing going through real struggles, real life things uh that are going to continue on after this show is done. Mm-hmm. Um and and I hope that people are kind and, and extend some some grace towards them. True. We've all got, you know, our challenges. Sounds like some of them struggle with drinking or 
you know, different things. Sw- swinging. That's something we didn't even touch we, on, and I don't think I want that's, to. Yeah, that's what we've heard. <laughs> uh, um, I it's the impression that I've gotten is that they take a lot of things really lightly. Yes. Or like they yes. don't take, you know, the law of chastity as seriously as mm-hmm. I think most members would. Like that is something that we covenant to obey in the temple. Yes. But my point is that I hope that I hope that they, you know, take some of these things more seriously. Mm-hmm. And I looked up because I've been hearing so much like commentary about yeah. this show. I looked up mom talk on TikTok because I was like, I'm what sorry. is this? I'm sorry. That's and so I need to go take some toothbrushes to my eyes after that because that was weird a very weird uh experience but like i don't think that as members of the church we would generally agree with a bunch of you know married or in a relationship i guess moms like cohabitating going going to do you know sexy dances on on tiktok on social media just uh, not not the not our the best most accurate representation of yeah us. But I hope that they take things more seriously in the True. future and that True. they, you know, change. And just because this is, you know, going to be out there forever on, you know, streaming services doesn't mean that they have to, you know, stay in this, you know, cycle forever. But yeah, will I be watching the rest of the season? Probably not. Oh, and will there be a season two? Mormon wives back in action. <laughs> Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. <laughs> oh. Guys, uh, let let us know what uh, you thought about these clips or about the show in general. We have very little context for what's going on. So fill us in and watch this other video while you're here and have a great day.